What's going on guys, Rob Beefo here coming at you with a custom lightsaber view, this time from Corbanth that you guys may have caught, uh, it was a couple weeks ago I think, I did a, we did the unboxing for this live on stream so you can check us out every Friday, we do that, sometimes we do unboxings, most of the time we just hang out, play video games, that kind of stuff, but uh, we did an unboxing of that, so we also, if you did catch, sorry, if you did catch the um, unboxing, that we did on the live stream, you would also know that not only do we have the Ancient Rev, Revan Jedi lightsaber here, which is the one we're going to be doing a review on, but we also got the Sith Revan hilt. So I'm going to be doing a separate review on this one, mainly just to save some time, and also because I ran into an issue when I actually did the review earlier. I, it was probably one or two weeks ago, like the week after I got the things, I went and I did the review and everything, but then during the demo portion of the review, I actually ran into some issues with this one. So I wanted to give it some more time to mess around with it, troubleshoot a few things, and uh, I got it. It's, it seems to be, for the most part, working completely fine now, um, minus a couple of issues that I am going to get into with it. And I don't know if this is a predominant thing with these in particular, or even with uh, Corbanth. Um, I've spoken to the gentleman I got these from. And uh, we're, we're trying to work everything out. So, and it's nothing like too major or anything. And I've heard nothing but good things from Corbanth. Uh, and then I also, I guess, uh, since we're talking about it, when I was recording with this one, somehow like the speaker, and this might be a common thing too. I'm not 100%, but uh, it turned out like I had a low battery on this. And when I had a low battery, the speaker quality was, it, there was a crackle sound no matter what. Like it sounded like fuzzy. I thought there was something wrong with the speaker. It sounded so bad. Uh, but thankfully, charged the battery, and it also froze on me a couple times too. So like, it would literally, like the light would stay on, but the humming would stop. I couldn't change it. I couldn't turn it off. Couldn't do anything. So it just the thing completely froze. I had to go in and kill, hit the kill switch just to get it to stop. So it was kind of like worrisome, in all honesty, because <laughs> I'm sitting here doing the review, and I'm just, just running into a ton of these problems, and it was. It was a bit worrisome, but everything seems to be squared away right now. And uh, that being said, let's uh, take a like a closer look at this thing because in the end, I really love these sabers. And uh, now that I've been like I had had some time to play with them a little bit more, I got this one. Had some different issues, which I'll get into and show you here in a minute that seem to be resolved now. So I'm very happy about that. Mainly because I actually like I, I really really love like the look of this thing. I think it looks incredible. Um, if, if you know too, like on the channel, I do have the ultimate works version of this blade and I got the gunmetal variant for it. So like you can tell there's like a little bit of differences to it. Obviously there's some, as far as the dimensions go, they're, they are very different and the, the internals are what the biggest, absolute biggest differences between the two. And then, um, some differences on the buttons, but um, I'll actually do another video later down the line, actually comparing these things both hands-on, uh, like much more detailed and everything. In the end, I don't think you could go wrong with either. I would say since the Ultimate Works one it will run you a bit cheaper, even if it's not like as accurate, um, it's definitely not a bad choice. Granted, at the same time, it's not like it's a couple, I don't know, it's like one, maybe $200 cheaper. I can't remember how much. And it was like, in the end, I don't know if like the money saving was really worth it. If it was like $500 cheaper, then I'd say, dude, just get the Ultimate Works one because like it's that good. But either way, let's actually take another quick look at this here. So if you notice here, some of the, some of the detailing here, one of the things that like a lot of companies get wrong with these uh, Rev and Jedi blades is uh the number of inlays and how like sometimes there's like five or six it's really weird and uh not all of them are like painted in the correct order uh but the corbanth one is the design work here in the middle like next to the buttons it looks great the etching is all good the buttons are just kind of these little like tactile like plastic buttons they work fine i like the buttons on the ultimate work one a little bit more they're a lot more responsive and they're a little bit i mean the top one's a bigger button like actually physically a bigger button even though they're designed to like kind of have the same look they like you, i mean you can just totally tell this is this whole uh section on the ultimate works one is a button whereas this one is just like a 
you know, a circle mold with a little tactile button in the middle. Um, elsewise, though, a, lo a lot of uh, people who have this particular, not this particular one, but this particular design of Saber, uh, a lot of the times often will speak out about how awkward it is to hold in their hand because of the, like, the, the three spikes. Obviously, at the top here, they kind of run down the entire hilt and then down the, almost to the pommel section, really. But uh, these uh, little grooves here can definitely make it like, I don't know, not, it's, it's a bit more cumbersome, I would say, more than um, obstructive. Um, if you're holding it up towards the top and trying to spin it like that, then yeah, it's not very good to grip. But the way Corbanth has the, or whoever actually designs the sculpt in general, but the way they designed this thing, these grooves feel really good in your hand. They almost act as, uh, I was going to say like a grip, but it's not really a grip because it's just metal, you know what I mean? But they almost act as a grip. Like, you know, they kind of, they sit in your hand like very well. They don't really get in your way, and I can't say the same for the Ultimate Works one. The Ultimate Works ones protrude out a lot, a lot further than this. Like this, you can kind of tell, it's really almost completely flat with your standard you know, cylinder uh, hilt here. So it feels really good. Like in all honesty, like this feels really good. And then you have like your little inlay here down the inside. Another thing that a lot of uh, companies, I don't really want to say get wrong because there's not like a, I always feel bad saying get wrong because there's not like a literal on-screen representation of this. Like there are like concept art and like things like that, but like it was in the video game. So it's like, more of a gray area for like screen accuracy in my opinion but one thing that uh, a lot of um these designs don't have that i'm kind of part in more in favor to we'll say are these like inlays on the bottom right they like don't have these little grooves a lot of times they're just completely flat here there's only one they're missing all together this black section a lot of times the company other companies just don't have them at all and uh, like the Ultimate Works one does not have it there at all. It doesn't even have one of the, there's no inlays there. There's no nothing. Here's a look at uh, the bottom pommel section. Some, uh, lots of holes there for your speaker to come through. Then uh, this one did come with the blade plug. So here's the blade plug. Try to get you a good look at it. There's that. Then, as far as the chassis goes, you just unscrew the pommel, and that comes out right there. Then you can see right here, that's where your speaker is right underneath here, and this is actually, this part here is part of the chassis itself. So what you do is this twists. So you just grab it, and you twist it, and then it pops right out. This one's a fully removable. So then you are left with this for the chassis. You get your battery here, profi board here, with your USB port right here, and then underneath that is the SD card. And then that's really it. And then this one has a kill switch right here. Try to get in frame there for you. Right here. Right. There. My fingers. Right there's your kill switch. So that's probably my favorite part of the design on this. And then here's this the uh, this is the least exciting part. There's a connector uh, where these little pins will go straight up into the top of the chassis, and then the NeoPixel blade will hit that. Because that's uh, the only other thing to really note is that you have your retention screw right here. Kind of hard to see because it's in the black, but it's right there. So this did come with an Allen wrench to remove the retention screw. It came with a blade plug, which fully removed is this right here. Nice, nice deep one there. That's what she said. <laughs> but then this thing is completely like hollow through it, which is interesting, right? So the way it actually works, when it goes in, it, it, uh, there are these grooves on the chassis right here. 
So it only will go into the hilt one particular way. And you see, once this goes all the way in, that's when you do the twist, so then it locks in place in that groove. And again, your speaker was down here as well, like I mentioned when I first pulled it out. So this was actually one of the problems I have with this one. Um, actually, there's a, before I put this thing back together, I do have a couple issues with the design of this, especially when compared to the Ultimate Works one. Um, the Ultimate Works one has a far superior chassis design. It too is fully removable, but um, there's really the way that they have the chassis built with this uh, ridge right here that holds the battery and the battery compartment. If you notice, this is your USB port and they have it mounted completely flat. So there's no way you're going to get a standard micro USB cable in there at all. Like it won't fit. So you have to have a right angle micro USB like this in order to get this in like a, a USB cable in there simply at all to update the profi config board for it. And even so, it's still really difficult to get this in here. And like, quite honestly, I just ordered this per recommendation of a uh, gentleman I got this from. And as you can see, like I still <laughs> I can't get this in. Like it, this does not fit really either. Like at all. Like, and like, I honestly like hate this. Like, I think it's really stupid. Like, I, the, there was such an easy fix for this that it kind of blows my mind. Like, I had to, uh, before he sent me, like, because I, I emailed him about this and a couple of the other issues I have with this. And I was like, dude, what cable do you use? Because, like, I literally had to cut one up just so I was able to, like, be able to bend it and get it in there because they have this mounted completely flat. The easy fix for this is just to mount it at an angle. Like, if they just had it mounted to where this backside was down like this, right? Then your USB port is angled up and you have no problem getting into this. But as it stands right now, even the cable that he recommended to me doesn't fit inside of this like at all. Like it, it will not fit. There's no way of getting this in here. It's like absolutely ridiculous in all honesty. Not to, uh, not like trying to hate on dude or anything, the dude's a really nice guy. And, uh, I love the like saber itself, but this chassis design is just terrible. Like it's honestly terrible. And uh, I'm mainly just now kind of frustrated with it because like I just got this cable in and I really just realized it didn't fit. <laughs> so like I'm even more a little bit annoyed than I was going into talking because it was already going to be one of my detractors for this. And now that I see that that doesn't fit, it's even more annoying. On top of that, I mentioned the, uh, USB card is down in there. Your micro USB is right underneath it. It's not one of the spring loaded USBs. So as you could probably imagine, that's pretty, that's pretty damn difficult to get to. And you're right. So you can't get into that to pull that out without a pair of tweezers. Like, and it's, it's just kind of annoying. Like I really didn't have too many issues doing it in all honesty, but it's kind of just frustrating in a lot of ways because it's like you got to wedge it in there and then you got to like get it lined up you have literally like no room to work with i mean this is like less than an inch of worth of room in there and you got to get the micro usd card or d card usb card to like be completely flush because it's like lines up perfectly flat in the it's sorry it's a terrible design all right like it's absolutely terrible especially if you take this into consideration i know i said i was going to do an actual comparison video of uh, these two later. But if you look at the design of the Packworks Ultimate Store one, look at this. So here's where your battery would be. Look at that. They have this at an angle, okay? So there's an angle there. There's absolutely zero issue. Even if the battery was in here right now, you can get the USB cable in there without any problems. And I mean, on top of that, this thing too, you can like activate the buttons and the LED, it has an, its own LED light on the chassis so you can see it. On top of which, with their chassis, you can literally like flip it around either way and it reverses what uh, your activation and auxiliary button does. So, like if you flip it one way, it, does, it turns it on, you flip it the other way, it turns it off. Like, and then the SD card's right underneath it. It is not spring-loaded either, but it's just still far easier to get to based on the angle. 
Whereas this one, you can't even use the USB cable. Like I, so at this point in time, technically speaking, I don't have a traditional USB cable that you can even buy out of the package that actually fits in this thing. Think about that. Like, kind of ridiculous. Not gonna lie. But, other than that, it's a pretty decent design. And I don't know if they have this problem with, like, other hilts, by the way. These are the only two core band hilts I have. The other chassis has a little bit more room in between the USB port and the actual, like, wall on the chassis. So it's not as difficult to get into. And I haven't tried it with the right angle USB cable. But, the one I cut up is able to fit in there. Now, the actual, like, physical problem in some way I had with this when I got it was this. I only have one LED working here. So, there's supposed to be five there. Sorry, that was right in the mic, so I don't know if you heard me. But there's supposed to be five there, for instance. So... So that was the actual like problem problem I had and then right here and I'll throw a clip up here and like once I explain what it is the problem I had when I was actually demoing this was the clash and blaster effects were just randomly going off like I would be holding it completely stable and it would just be like pew 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 and clash clash and blah, it doesn't do nothing like here's the clip just watch it so this one has an unstable Look, I didn't do anything. I'm literally doing nothing. I'm not doing a damn thing. So as you can see, it's just kind of, I was kind of concerned, right? And I think what I ended up doing to quote unquote resolve that because it's kind of, it's still kind of too early to tell. And like I said, I have reached out to, like I said, the gentleman who I got this from, and uh, he's really nice about it. He's a really nice guy. I loved working with the guy. He was really nice. He gave me a nice deal on these. He sold me the Sith one from uh, his personal collection because they didn't have it in stock anymore. I wanted them as a set. So, like, I don't want it to sound like I'm, like, crapping on them or anything, but it's just these are expensive. So it's kind of frustrating when they don't work properly or they have kind of a poor design, right? So, like, in the end, the kind of what I figured is uh, I'll probably just, since I have... Everything kind of how I want it, and I'm happy with it as far as the config goes on here. I'll probably just leave it that way, like, in all honesty. Um, just because it's such a trifle just to, like, work with to get in there and change anything. But what I ended up doing to uh, test and uh, have it in the place it's in now is I just essentially copied all the fonts in the config file and everything from my Ultimate Works board. And slapped it on to the config file that came with this thing so it essentially only changed the fonts and the ignition effects and all that stuff and it doesn't seem to have the problem with the clash and blaster effects going off like at random um so my guess was that maybe some blaster and clash sounds found its way into like a hum folder or something and so they're just kind of going off i i really don't know like maybe they maybe they made their way into a smooth swing config. There was just a problem with the the font itself. I really don't know because the odd thing was is all the fonts were the same that were on this one. This one didn't have that problem. So if you know they used the same config file, then I don't know because that was the other thing when uh, with the light that's not working on this one inside of the hilt. Um, the gentleman mentioned that, uh, oh, just change how many, like, LED lights that are there in your config file. And But I had, that was the other thing. I asked him, this one didn't have the config file, but this one did. So then I requested the config file for this one from him, and he sent me the same one as this. And I reached back out to him, and I was like, that looks like the same one. So are you are you implying that they have the same config file? Because if they did then there'd be no problem with the LEDs based on the config file if they're using the same config file. Ergo, the whole Clash Blaster sound effect thing also shouldn't be a problem if they are indeed using the same config file. So I don't really know where we're at with that right now. But that being said, 
again, as far as the hilt design and everything else goes with it in the, the NeoPixel blades, great. This is great. Um, like the actual overall sculpt design of everything, it feels great. All that's a plus. I just think I got kind of a lemon kind of thing as it stands right now. And at the very least, since this is a NeoPixel blade, it only having one working LED in there isn't the biggest deal in the world. It's just more of an annoyance. And as you saw, it still was enough to light up the blade plug and illuminate it. So I don't know. I'm Like I said, I'm still working with them, so we'll figure it out. And I'll, I'll keep you posted. And he's he's been great to work with. The only other thing to really mention of note with this is uh the spikes on it. They will actually like stab you. Like you probably wouldn't be able to take this to a convention or anything because uh, they're incredibly sharp. I've cut my my hand on it. You can kind of see right there. That was from this. My hand just like slipped on it when I was picking it up one time. I stabbed like the inside of my finger right here. I don't know if you can see it. It was like a couple weeks ago. It's in there, I promise. But I was really just, I was putting this on and my hand just slipped, stabbed me. Like, so they are substantially sharper than the Ultimate Works one. The Ultimate Works one, like, it, this isn't sharp at all, like, really. I mean, you could, if you forcefully came at somebody with it, like, you'd get them. But, like, this thing, you can accidentally puncture yourself, like, quite easily, so something to note the other thing to really note and uh like i said i'm, I'm just going to do a demo of these two at some point anyway but this one did come with a cover tech wheel this one did not technically speaking it's not supposed to have a cover tech wheel so it's kind of up to you if you like it but either way i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to demo some of these fonts and uh we'll kind of go from there all right guys so if you didn't catch the uh First lightsaber review we did here, I have a two camera setup, one with lower ISO settings so you can see a lot of the colors a lot better. And then the other one here, I just have the lights off just on the other side of my studio. Granted, I'm probably going to warn about this all the time. This side of my studio is my gym, so I can't go too crazy in here because I might hit something. So regardless, I'm going to go through some of these. I know it, like I talked about it a little bit longer than I'd hoped, so I'm going to try to speed through some of these some really quick. Pretty much just to showcase some of the cool stuff that I did with the Profi board more than anything with some of the ignition effects. So these are all um, Old Republic fonts on here, minus like two or three of them. And uh, yeah, we'll just get into it. We'll get into it. We got that. The one thing with this too I didn't mention the ignition button is on the bottom and the auxiliary button's on the top. You'd think it'd be the other way around. The, it's like it's like that on the uh, the Ultimate Works one. The bigger button is the uh, power button and the smaller button on the bottom, like uh, closer to you, is the auxiliary button and it's reversed on this one. So when I'm dual wielding both of them, it gets kind of confusing at times. Right, this has a cool ignition effect. Flash, and then uh, we have lightning. Well, sorry about that. Not sure what happened. The camera just stopped randomly. Yeah, here's that one. This one mainly just has that cool light up effect, and it has like an unstable blade kind of thing going on. You can see it pretty well on the other side. It's kind of like an orangish red, and that's why I like that's why I do the two cams because it's kind of hard to. It almost looks yellow on the normal pan, so... Told you. Told you is why I can't go too crazy in here. I am Juhani. This one has... It's supposed to be like a... Uh, it's supposed to be like the Infinity Stones. So if you see, it's got this uh, emitter effect on it to where it stays like kind of lit up, and then it stays white as it turns on, like the whitish blue. got a cool sound to it and it's kind of like a pulsating energy kind of blade which you couldn't see at all in that one but then if you do the color change it starts to add other colors into it and you're gonna have to pretty much exclusively look at the dark screen for it and this is where the infinity stones come in so it starts adding another color for each of the stones you know we got like that was three I believe so then four and it looks really cool when you start moving it. And five. 
There's six. So that's your infinity gauntlet right there. But it's a really cool effect. And that's more, if you look at the brightness levels of this bigger cam combined with the actual like colors of the other cam, then it's a pretty good representation of what it actually looks like. And it's just pulsating all the way down through the blade. And then the last one kind of just like, it's still there, but it just like rotates a bit. It only happens when you like move the blade. But you still have lightning. And you have force effects if you hold the power button down. I thought it was a kind of cool effect. This is Mikal. I have found the exile. This one again just kind of has a pulsating effect to it. Which just looks like a blue blade on that one. Like so. These are all Old Republic fonts from the uh, Kyber Phonics, like, uh, he did like a big old, old Republic pack, and that's what these are from. The Exile. This one's very similar. This has a different hum more than anything. And for most of these, aside from a couple, like uh, the Infinity Stone one, I can... You can just use the color change feature whenever you want and just like change it. And we'll go with that. Sure. Kind of a lightest bluish pinkish colorblind, so. Then we got. Now this is hot racing. This is one of my favorite ones. You can hear it has just an idle pod racing hum, like the engine. Because obviously this is a pod racer, if you couldn't tell. But I, just, I thought it was cool. I it. it still has lightning. Oops, that was color change. See, I still get it backwards. But then also I have an effect with this one that it changes like to white as I as I only while I move the blade. I just love the engine sound. Then, like, if you notice, one of the cooler things about this one too is the uh, the emitter ignition effect. I kind of made it look like it's like an engine slowly starting up, and then it kind of like still stays on heated a bit. I thought that was cool. This is a Dooku one, which I also have, changing colors as you move it. And then the force sound with him is uh, when he's spinning the blades at uh, Kenobi and uh, Attack of the Clones. Let's see, ignition. This one's just another Grievous. Now the rest are all over public. Actually, no, I got one more that's not over public. So this is actually like a it's like a yellowish green, not white, like this is coming through. This is a really good palm. Jolie, Jolie Bindo. 
Vikings, Darth Nihilus. It's a very menacing home. Force effects. And I had the, the white tip as it comes down. It has like kind of a sparky, glitchy kind of ignition onto it. And then it like pulses with that white. I thought that was kind of fitting. Darth Malik. This one, though, is my favorite. My absolute favorite effect. And like ignition sound and everything combined with it. too crazy. And I have it like bouncing on the emitter there again. And it also looks cool. I know it's kind of like corny, but with the kind of effect it has, it looks good if you do a spin while you turn it on. Like... Good stuff. Got lightning. Then here's a uh, Darth Revan. Darth Revan. Now, if you saw, it kind of flashed purple there. Because for this one, I have exclusive color change settings to only go to purple. But then, there is this force effect on it. That has a kind of, even while it's red, does this like unstable purple energy kind of effect to it. I think these have stable effects, so you can tell on both cameras they look really cool when you're moving them. God, I'm gonna break something. I know I'm gonna break something in here. But it's cool too with those effects. It keeps them when you first turn them on. It just timed out on that one, but I have another one that uh, has a similar force effect to it. I am Bestia Shand. This one just has a kind of an interesting, I don't know how much I like it, interesting hum though. That's the one thing uh, I'll say about all the Old Republic fonts from Kyberphonic. They all have very unique hums, and not so much, a lot of them sound similar when com in, like, in comparison to the set, um, but they sound vastly unique when in comparison to your traditional hums, right? Like, a lot of the OG hums, like, especially from the movies, well, especially because everyone just kind of passes their lightsabers around in the original, in the, the actual, you know, Star Wars movies anymore. Um, no one just comes out with their, their own new one, really. Um, so they're all very similar hums, right? All these ones are very unique from the ones that we know in the movies and shows and everything. Second sister. This one, though, is one of my absolute favorites. This is a second sister font from uh, Fallen Order from Kyberphonic. And I have like an emitter effect on here that just kind of that actually times out after a while. Now it's gone. Where so you can see the unstable. Like it just looks like crazy. I just think it looks awesome. Like, it's just pulsing, like, really, like, it's like a clean pulse unstable, but then when you spin it, it looks like, I don't know, it just looks like fire, like. And then this one.
has the white pulsing through, and as you see, it like times out. It starts to dissipate over time. That's one of the reasons I really like it because it just has like a nice effect just on the saber altogether. But as you can see, it maintains it until it times out. And you can still do your force lightning. It's good stuff. As you can see, no problem spinning this thing around. It feels great despite having the uh, ridges there. This one is cool too. This is actually supposed to replicate a fire sword. Like not so much a light table but a fire sword. As you can see, it's brighter down here and then gets darker towards the top. And then when you hold it upside down, the fire actually completely dissipates. Just as if you were holding a torch. So I think that's a very cool effect. Anyway. And then when you flip it back over, it rises back up, just like firewood. Oh, buddy. These also look good when you spin it. simple start up for uh, the Sidious font here. Of course, force lightning, Got, like force choke. And that was it. That was all of them I have on here. So that was it, guys. Again, I'm going to say it again in a second. I know it. That mallet font, though. I love it. That was it, though. And I like it a lot, like I said. And again, feels great. The blade feels great. Doesn't uh, It feels nice and secure, even just despite having just the one little uh, blade plug and all. So there it is. That was a little demo. Sorry that it uh, took longer than I wanted it to. All right, guys, I hope you liked that. Uh, I really like uh, that Malik font. I think the ignition effects that I got on there are pretty, pretty good, uh, if I do say so myself. The, I don't know, the startup for is just awesome, and that's the one thing that I'm really happy about with getting uh, the profi boards, or at least that I've come to really appreciate with profi boards, and I understand why a lot of people, as I was doing my research to get into these custom lightsabers, saw more and more people leaning towards and recommending the profi boards, and a lot of it had to do with a lot of the prions, ignition effects, and just overall customization that they, they kind of have built into them, and I haven't been disappointed with that at all. Like, they're, they're great. I love messing around with it. It's really, once you know how to do the config file portion of it, it's really easy to go through and just, like, do all the stuff. Um... I'll put a link down in the uh, um, the description of the video for uh, I forget the the guy's name, but the guy who has like the there's like a site where you can go in and like just easily make all these like config files and uh, or uh, God I'm having a brain fart right now make all the like the blade effects and lighting effects and all that stuff and this kind of pre generates the code for you, you kind of get a preview of everything I'll put it down in the description um, even though this thing didn't work this USB cable. I just bought it, uh, like I said, based on his recommendation. So like maybe, maybe they'll work good for one of yours. So if I remember, I'll put the link to this USB cable down in the description. Uh, I, I did forget to mention it did come with a uh, charger for the battery, and it came with a battery and everything. So, but guys, let me know what you guys think of uh, the ancient rev from Corbanth. Overall, I really love the thing. So like I just, it's like I told the like again the gentleman that uh, I got it from. Like I just really want them to work because I really love them. Like I, I, Revan's like my favorite character. These are some of the most accurate 
you know, accurate designs for Revan's lightsaber. So I was really happy to be able to get both of them, and especially from Corban, since I heard such great things about him. And like I said, he's been he's been great to work with. He was always quick to respond. So still in the process of getting everything worked out with this one. So don't forget though. Again, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff too, whatever. But then um, let me know what you think about that. And if you're thinking about getting a uh, one of the ancient, or ancient Rev, of the Rev and light, Jedi lightsabers, because, you know, they have that more intricate, you know, spiky design to them and everything. And most people think that's the Sith one when they first see it. And I totally get it. But let me know if you're thinking about it. And if uh, you plan on getting the Corbanth one, I, I think they still have the empty hilts available. They don't have any pre-installs available, available, but... Uh, I think Ultimate Works might have some of the regular ones still. I'm not 100% sure. But don't forget, guys, again, you can check out uh, every Friday we do live streams. Like I said, we do the unboxing sometimes during the live streams. You can send topics and questions to our show, Honest and Uneducated, that comes out every Monday. You can send topics and questions to us uh, just by emailing us at honestandoneducated at gmail.com. That's honestandoneducated at gmail.com. And uh, if you haven't seen the show, go check it out. There's a huge playlist on the channel of all the clips, and uh, it comes out every week. We talk about movies, movie news, video games, comic books, just all sorts of fun stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, if you like the video, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. But until next time, guys, take care. Take care.